Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas with the National Association for the Advancement of Orthotics and Prosthetics, NAAOP. Two main issues I want to bring to your attention this month. Uh, the first involves the VA, the second involves the prior authorization regulation in a proposed form that was issued by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But first, the VA. As many of you probably know just by reading the newspaper, uh, Secretary of the VA, Eric Shinseki, resigned last week uh, amid uh, multiple allegations of uh, uh, the VA simply not serving veterans in appropriate ways. Uh, this included long uh, waiting lines and lists for uh, VA services, particularly in Phoenix, but also in, in, in 26 other facilities that are being investigated around the country, as well as uh, we're learning about significant swings in the quality of care that are received by veterans in different cities throughout uh, the United States. Um, this also in implicates the Legionnaire's disease issue uh, that occurred up in uh, Pennsylvania as well as other VA missteps. This was a trying time for the Vet Veterans Administration and many uh, veteran service organizations had to decide whether to call for the Secretary's resignation or not. The American Legion actually did. Many of the others uh, withheld judgment until the issue issuance of an Inspector General's report that was quite damning of the VA. Many of us are a bit surprised that the public uh, knew so little about the failures of the VA uh, to meet the needs of veterans because we see on the front lines uh, every day how amputees and others with disabilities uh, oftentimes are not served well by the VA. The VA does have a very significant uh, 170 hospital system that uh, has some exemplary instances and illustrations of care, and yet uh, this consistency is simply not the case across the country. And we've seen that as Exhibit A with respect to orthotic and prosthetic care. That's why we have been fighting hard to try to get the Injured and Amputee Veterans Bill of Rights, uh, H.R. 3408, uh, through the Congress. Uh, we think that this uh, instance where the country is focused on the Veterans Administration trying to improve the VA offers a, us a new opportunity to try to move that legislation forward and we encourage all of our members to push forward with trying to get support for that bill. Second, with respect to prior authorization, uh, a proposed rule came out. The comments are due at the end of July, July 28th, and both NAAOP and our alliance partners are working hard to address uh, the issues that were raised in the uh, proposed rule. The proposed rule ultimately would um, impose prior authorization on a predetermined list of services in the DEMIPOS area. If, you, if a particular item or service makes that master list uh, from which uh, those um, devices exposed to prior authorization would come, um, then they would be subject to prior authorization and uh, patients who come to, for instance, a prosthetist uh, for prosthetic care, uh, if one of those uh, items or services on the list uh, is implicated by prior authorization, they would need to go through that process and secure all documentation prior to going forward with the production or the design fabrication of a limb. Some prosthetists believe this is a better alternative to uh, the pay and chase model that we're in now, where a uh, two-year delay in the appeals process basically renders the prosthetist without any options and leaves them holding the bag. Uh, others strongly disagree, and I would suggest that the, the national organizations are still formulating their opinions. AOPA has come out with its opinion. The NAAOP is considering its, its uh, position on this issue, but by and large, we're moving towards a position that prior authorization uh, really is not a good policy. It's not in the interest of patients. Uh, and we would really, uh, uh, in exchange for any kind of a uh, prior authorization model, we would very much like to see some changes uh, to the way that audits are performed on O&P claims. Again, we're still developing these policies and we'll let you know as soon as we have uh, more detail on the outcome. Uh, but um, we encourage OMP uh, providers to examine this proposed rule. Uh, you can find this on our uh, website, www.naaop.org, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you uh, during the next webcast. Thank you.